It's amazing at how quickly Stanford football has fallen off. In the first eight years under David Shaw, the Cardinal went 82 and 26 with three Pac-12 championships. But over the last four years, the Cardinal are just 14 and 28 with 18 of those 28 losses by at least 15 points. David Shaw resigned last year, leading to this new era of Stanford football that will now be led by Troy Taylor. But his first year with the Cardinal, this 2023 season, it isn't going to be pretty. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're ready to break down, analyze, and predict Stanford's schedule and record for this upcoming college football season. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Do not miss out on that, guys. It's guaranteed money right back in your pocket as we feed out over 80% of the national analysts and handicappers each of the last five years. Check out our Patreon account as well. Some exclusive content over there. Join our Patreon wall of fame to gain year-round access to us here at the Gridiron Expert, but also content that will only be posted on Patreon. And check out our mailing address as well. Send us some gear to be represented in every single Gridiron Expert video from now through eternity as we continue to expand our GE Nation from coast to coast. And we desperately need some more Pac-12 representation. So send us some stuff to get a shout out and again, to have your team represented in every single video. So let's take a look at Stanford, guys. I feel for the Cardinal. I mean, just the fall from grace. David Shaw was phenomenal. He was doing a great job. It wasn't just, you know, carrying over uh, the, the, the little bit of success that Jim Harbaugh had. He continued that success. But these last four years, it's fallen apart. As the Cardinal haven't been able to recruit as heavily as other Pac-12 teams. They haven't been able to utilize the transfer portal as heavily as other Pac-12 teams or those within just the Power 5 period. That's kind of led to the demise of the Cardinal. Last year, going just 3-9 and nine with a blowout win over Colgate and then interesting wins over Notre Dame, 16-14, to and a 15-14 to win over Arizona State. Weird wins there, but those easily could have been losses that could have led to a 1-11 year for Stanford. Regardless, though, 3-9, and nine, nothing to hang your hat about. Troy Taylor comes in as the new head coach, though. 30-8 and eight in three years at Sacramento State. Rebuilt their program out of the FCS. And I think he's going to do the same here with Stanford. It's just going to take some time because there's no talent. Just to be bluntly honest, no talent with a Stanford team right now. Three starters back on offense, one that averages 21.3 points per game last year, and that was with a decent quarterback in Tanner McKee. Now there's a quarterback battle going on for the Cardinal between Ari Patu and Ashton Daniels. The two quarterbacks have combined for just 31 collegiate passing attempts. That's it. The offensive line, pretty bad. Only 15 FBS starts up front. The top two rushers do return for the Cardinal. They might be a run-heavy team, but with very limited and inexperienced quarterback play and a bad offensive line, the Stanford offense could be worse than they were last year. Same can be said for the defense. One that gave up over 32 points per game last year, including 224 rushing yards per game. Only three starters back on that side of the ball. Allowed over 500 yards in five of their 12 games last year. It's going to take some time to build up that side of the ball, no doubt about it. You take a look at the schedule, guys. Stanford is not doing them any favors. I mean, they're playing a brutal schedule in a brutal conference. One that is loaded with talent. The likes of Oregon, USC, Washington, Utah. But of course, having to play Notre Dame in your non-conference, it doesn't help your cause at all. But you take a look at the schedule, there might be a few wins that we can get for the Cardinal this year. They open up the year at Hawaii, taking on the Rainbow Warriors, which to me is, is always an interesting time if you have to be the one to travel to Hawaii. It just doesn't make your job any easier. The, the flight's long, uh, the, the atmosphere is very different than anywhere else you're going to play in the country. It's always very difficult. But this Hawaii team, while it's a winnable game for Stanford, I'm actually going to give them a loss here. And here's why. Hawaii has a little bit of an advantage. They have a slight advantage. They have a one-year advantage over Stanford when it comes to their coaching edge, when it comes to the continuity edge of their players. And this is a Hawaii team that improved last year as the year went on. Only four one-possession losses for the Rainbow Warriors. They went 3-10, and ten, had an opportunity to maybe win seven games. Nine starters are back on the defensive side of the ball. That's going to bode well against a Stanford offense. That's going to be very lackluster, especially in the first game of the year. They have an experienced quarterback in Braden Shager, they're running that run-and-shoot offense. This is a Hawaii team that I don't think is going to necessarily surprise in the Mountain West, but has what it takes to beat Stanford in Week 1. Give me the win there for the Rainbow Warriors. Troy Taylor does not get off to that 1-0 start that every coach wants. Stanford certainly does not get 1-1. One one. They fall to USC. They held their own against the Trojans 41-28 last year. That was before the ultimate collapse of the Cardinal throughout the year. USC now on the road for the Cardinal. Much better 
possibly than they were last year. Caleb Williams is back as the Heisman Trophy winner. The offense is going to be electric as well, always. The Stanford defense, I don't think, has what it takes at all to slow them down. So Stanford goes 0 and 2. Week 3 is intriguing, right? If you're just kind of turning a blind eye, you see Sacramento State, FBS versus FCS, and you go, oh, Stanford wins. It's over. Let's move on. But no, that's not the case for multiple reasons. First off, Sacramento State's a pretty solid team out of the FCS. Why are they a solid team out of the FCS? Because Troy Taylor made them that. Troy Taylor left Sacramento State to become the head coach at Stanford. In week three, just three games into his tenure, he's going to be playing against his former school. And you know that Sacramento State would love to take down their coach. You know the players that he had at Sacramento State would love to take him down at Stanford and send his team to 0-3 as they head in to the bulk of conference play. They'd love nothing more. And I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. But I'm going to give Troy Taylor the edge here. I'm going to give his head coaching experience the edge. I'm going to give Stanford's just power five experience, the limited amount that they have, the edge over Sacramento State. Would I be shocked if Stanford loses this game? Not a bit. Not a bit. It's an intriguing game. It's a very intriguing game because of all the aspects that we just mentioned. But I'm going to give Stanford the slight edge and give Troy Taylor his first victory, one that's going to be emotional for so many different reasons. First one at his new program, but it's also going to come against his former team. A lot of irony there. Watch out for September 16th. This is a, a trap game for Stanford, but a very intriguing one. It's not going to get nationally televised or anything like that, but one that I will have my eye on. Stanford gets the win. They're 1-2. and two. Then they enter conference play, and it's brutal. It's absolutely brutal. And I will tell you right now, we'll go through it quickly. Stanford's not winning another game the rest of the year. Stanford loses out after Sacramento State. 1-11 for Stanford. Listen, guys, they play Arizona. An Arizona offense that returns a, a lot of starters. Eight starters on offense. One that averaged over 315 passing yards per game last year. Pretty dang good. Eight starters back. Jaden Delora is fantastic. That Stanford secondary was pretty dang bad. It's going to be maybe a little bit worse this year. They should win pretty solid. The Wildcats should. They should win at home pretty easily. Oregon, no chance. They lost 45-27 last year to the Ducks. I know they pulled up an upset over Oregon a few years ago, but Oregon has their sights set on the Pac-12 title. They have their sights set on the college football playoff. Yes, Stanford gets to host the Ducks, but Oregon with Bo Nix and 16 starters coming back and Dan Lanning in year two just doesn't stand a chance. Uh, Stanford does not stand a chance. They drop that game. They're 1-4 entering their bye week. Then they go on the road to Colorado. A winnable game, yes. This might be a battle for last place in the Pac-12. The winner of this might avoid the seller. The loser of this might finish last in the conference. Very well could. But I like Colorado here. In Boulder, at home, with a team that is consisting mostly of transfers, which to me isn't going to bode well for Colorado, but it does consist of a lot of transfers from Power 5 teams. Guys that have a legitimate Power 5 playing experience. Shadur Sanders was a starter at Jackson State, putting up phenomenal numbers under his dad, who now is the head coach at Colorado. So Deion Sanders, I don't think he's going to have this amazing year in Boulder in year one, but he is going to get this win over Stanford. Home field advantage is a key role here, but Colorado owns the edge in every single aspect. No doubt about it. So give me the win for the Buffaloes. Stanford will lose to UCLA. They lost by 25 points last year. This UCLA defense returns nine starters, maybe the best defense of the Chip Kelly era. And that offense is going to be sneaky good. Everybody wants to hope, focus on the loss of Dorian Thompson-Robinson instead of focusing on the gain, the addition of Dante Moore, the star five-star quarterback that I think is perfect for Chip Kelly's offense, what he wants to run in L.A. So they lose to UCLA. They lose to Washington. We talked about how bad the secondary might be. Elite passing attacks like Arizona. Uh, Washington's the best. Number one passing offense in the country last year. 370 passing yards per game with Michael Penix returning and most of his pass catchers returning. Stanford doesn't stand a chance at home against the Huskies. They go on the road to Washington State, a team they allowed 514 yards of offense to last year. The Cougars won 52-14 to over the Cardinal. Now they're having to go to Pullman, which is never an easy place to play in the Pac-12. Cam Ward returns. Nakia Watson returns. This is a good Washington State offense with a defense under Jake Dichter that's pretty solid. Typically, Washington State wins big once again. Stanford then goes at Oregon State. Interesting game here because Stanford was actually beating Oregon State by two scores in the fourth quarter. They should have won that game over the Beavers last year. They collapsed and allowed a game-winning 56-yard touchdown pass with 13 seconds left to fall to the Beavers 28-27. to A heartbreaking, gut-wrenching loss for Oregon or for Stanford that would have given them four wins last year and another narrow victory and 
a, a slew of them. It's Notre Dame and Arizona State. Very odd there. But now they have to go to Corvallis, where Oregon State is 12-1 and over the last two years. An Oregon State team that offensively is going to be phenomenal, especially on the ground, as they average nearly 200 rushing yards per game. And Stanford, as we mentioned, gave up over 224 rushing yards per game. The Beavers should have a field day on the ground. Oregon State wins that one big. Stanford plays California in the game. It's a fun one, right? I love this rivalry game. The 117th meeting between California and Stanford. The 10th longest rivalry game in college football. So even if both teams are bad, it's still a historic game that you want to kind of keep your eye on. This California team, I'm not expecting too much out of. But again, across the board, from a coaching standpoint, they own the edge. From an offensive standpoint, they own the edge. Even if they do have the quarterback questions right now. And defensively, while it might not be great, certainly on the edge. And against this Stanford offense, it's going to be pretty lackluster. You don't have to be great defensively to beat the Cardinal in 2023. California should beat Stanford, even though the Cardinal get to host. And then, of course, they play Notre Dame, who they did beat last year, 16-14. to But that was before Notre Dame got hot. Notre Dame lost to Stanford and then won six of their last seven games to close out the year. The only loss was on the road to USC. The home team has won seven of the last 11 games in this series, so that has one thing Stanford's got going for them, but Notre Dame across the board is going to be too good. Sam Hartman coming in. The defense stingy as always under Marcus Freeman. They carry in a lot of momentum from last year. This is a team that could be a college ball playoff contender, no doubt about it, and simply isn't going to lose to Stanford. Certainly if that's on the line or a New Year's Six Bowl game is on the line, you do question Stanford's you know, confidence and their motivation. Sitting at 1-10, and 10, they're just not beating the Fighting Irish. And with that, Stanford will finish 1-11 and 11 in year one under Troy Taylor. So a lot of ones. Straight ones across the board, just not in a good way. Troy Taylor's team struggles mightily, but that is to be expected. Guys, I'm telling you, I'm not even ruling out an 0-12 season. I'm not completely sold on that Sacramento State game. I do think Stanford wins it. Wouldn't be shocked if they lose it. Maybe you sub that out and give them the win over Hawaii. But at the most, this team wins two games. That's it. I just don't see many wins on the schedule for the Cardinal. It's going to be a rough year. They don't have the advantages that some of these other teams in the conference have or just in the college football period have. They're going to have to rebuild. Troy Taylor did that at Sacramento State. He came in and took in a struggling program and rebuilt them into a power, into a perennial playoff team at the FCS level. I think he can get them into a perennial Pac-12 contender at Stanford, but it's going to take time. 1-11, not ideal, but then he gets another full recruiting class under his belt, and year two is when the Cardinal start to build, and maybe, slowly but surely, start to return to the form that we were so used to seeing in the late Harbaugh stages and in those eight years of glory under David Shaw. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com, our Patreon account for exclusive college football content year-round, and of course, check out our mailing address. Send us some gear to be represented in every single Gridiron Expert video from now through eternity. We want to expand our GE Nation from coast to coast, and that's how you can help us do it, especially getting some West Coast Pac-12 representation. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert.